this is the Provoke Prawn, and in this video I'm going to be talking to you about the considerations of your power supply unit when building your own gaming PC. The things you need to think about in terms of the wiring, the logic for connecting up cables, more importantly the first initial steps, as in which one do you buy, which is the right power supply unit for you. So there are obviously a number of different considerations, especially with more recent graphics cards making things a bit more complicated and the power requirements of such. So it's important to do your research before you've even purchased. But later on in the video, I'm going to show you all the connections, what plugs in where to make life a lot easier. Now, if you're planning on some insane build, loads of RGB and loads of fans and loads of things in it, then you may require more power. You can see here, for example, a bonkers RGB build I did with a Corsair 5000D RGB, which not only had loads of awesome things in it, but also loads of different cables that need to be connected up. Absolutely loads of different controllers at the back of the case, loads of different power cables that needed to be sorted out, and more. So before you go through this step, I'd recommend a few different things. So one of the things I always recommend to people is to use Outer Vision's PSU calculator. What this does is it enables you to drop in the specs of the build, so the things that you're planning on using in your build and you can put them in there and it'll work out how much you need. I want to demonstrate one important thing you'll see with NVIDIA's 4090 for example. We'll quickly hop over to NVIDIA's website. If you go over to that and then go down to specs and then view full specs, if you scroll down through the specs list you'll find the requirements for the power consumption down here. You'll see obviously this is an extreme GPU, the 4090, probably not going to buy this for most people is a bit insane, but you can see that it requires a minimum of 850 watt power supply, and that's because it can draw a certain amount of power under full load. You also require specific cables that we'll get into later on, but it's something that may well draw a lot of power from your system. If you're also throwing in loads of other things like multiple NVMe SSDs, a powerful CPU, a liquid cooling system, multiple fan controllers, RGB lighting, as you've seen me doing earlier on, and a variety of other things too. And all of this can add up, and it can mean that you end up needing a more powerful PSU than perhaps you realized. So for this example, you can see the recommended wattage is 933 watts. Obviously, if you've got an 850 watt, that wouldn't be ideal, but a 1000 watt may well be perfect for the system. You don't want to buy one that's too big, and you also don't want to buy one that's too small. The other thing is not to skimp on your power supply unit. You could see that the Outer Vision calculator actually recommends one from a brand I've never heard of, and you probably haven't either. I wouldn't skimp on it. Don't go cheap on your power supply unit, because it's one of the most important parts of your build. If you buy a cheap one that then shorts out, it can cause problems, perhaps destroying your entire system. So you want to buy something that's reliable from a reputable brand that has the right wattage, but also is gold weighted, maybe 80 plus gold, to make sure it's efficient as well. You want to make sure that you've got all the connectors that you need and that it's just going to be powered well. I'd recommend a modular power supply unit. Most modern, powerful, reasonable quality ones are. You can see, obviously, I'm using Corsair demonstrations here, for example. These modular supply units allow you to just plug in the cables that you need and nothing else, so you don't have to worry about loads of extra cables that you've then got to try and work out what you're going to do with. You could just plug in the things that you need for the parts that you're going to be using and I'll show you the steps for all of those later on so you can get an idea of that as we go through. But these are some of the considerations. You've got to make sure you're not cheaping out, you're getting good quality and also that it's going to fit in your case. The other consideration is working out the logic of your build and what will fit in it. So it is well worth considering the specs of your case. Now, PC Part Picker is another tool that you can use to work out your build and what parts are compatible. You can head over to the website and I'll leave links to these websites in the description. And you can basically put in the parts you're considering and then you can see what will fit where and you can add them in. And this will basically give you an idea of whether things are compatible, including the power supply unit. It is worth noting that cases can have a big difference because some cases won't take the larger ATX PSUs and require a small form factor one. So that's well worth considering. Standard sort of ATX PSUs like this one here, for example, require a bit more room. So you need a mid tower or larger case, a full tower. If you have a small form factor, you may need to go smaller, but you also still need to consider wattage. So for this example, I'm going to show you the Corsair RM1000E and then show you what you're meant to do with it and all the things you need to know about this PSU. 
Now this is an ATX 3.0 power supply unit, fully modular, and it also includes PCIe Gen 5 power adapters, perfect for NVIDIA's 40 series. When you get it out of the box, you'll find a number of cables in it. Obviously, I'm going to show you what cable does what, what plugs in where, and how to connect up the various different devices you're going to be using. So to kickstart this, I'm just going to quickly show you which cables you have and the sort of logic to them. So these top ones here, you can see these are for your motherboard. So you've got two 8-pin CPU power connectors and then a thick, hard to manipulate 24-pin power cable which plugs into the motherboard. And I'll show you all of these in a second. Then you've got multiple PCIe cables. These are for your graphics card and they're slightly different. So pay attention to that. And I'll talk through in a minute why that matters. Then you have two SATA power connectors, which obviously multi daisy chainable connectors on there. And I'll show you what those plug into in a minute as well. And then you've got PATA as well, which is obviously for other peripherals. You might not use this one, so that might not matter as much. We'll get to that in a minute. And then you've got the new generation PCIe Gen 5 power adapter for NVIDIA's 40 series GPUs with a single connector, which makes things a lot neater. I'm going to show you that with a 4070 Ti later on. So I'm going to go through the steps for each of these to make it life a little bit easier for you. So it's easy to understand and see what goes where. And I'm going to kickstart with the motherboard connections because these are obviously the most important to get your PC up and running. And so the motherboard connector is the first fat one that you want to connect up. You'll see on one end it has this single connector and on the other end it's split into two. The part that's split into two needs to plug into the top left where it's marked motherboard on the power supply unit end. And then the other end connects up to your motherboard. Now I'm going to show you these things outside the case. Obviously stick to the end of the video and actually plug things in once you've got everything installed in your case already. I'm just demonstrating this so it's easier to see. But you will want to plug your cables into the power supply unit side. So it's a good idea to get those plugged in before you start building because it makes it much easier rather than having to manipulate these cables in once the PSU is installed in your case. So just to show you from multiple angles, you'll notice that these cables have a clip on the top of them in that the PSU end that clicks in place and holds it in there firmly. Now on the motherboard itself, you also see that the 24 pin cable has a clip on that. So you need to make sure you angle that the right way round because there's a clip on the motherboard connector as well. So you can only plug this in one way. And it's the same for all of these cables. They all plug in in a logical way, but you need to make sure they plug in and push in until that clip holds it in place. It's got a hook on there and that will just stay in place. So that's the first connector. Make sure that's connected really well at both ends. Otherwise your PC will not turn on. The next is the eight pin CPU power connectors. You'll see them clearly marked with CPU on the side of them. Now you might not have these eight pin connectors on your motherboard. It varies from motherboard to motherboard, but you can see this one is a gigabyte motherboard that has two connectors. I need to plug in one end to the slot smart PCIe CPU on the top right or bottom right hand side of this power supply unit, plug those in. And again, make sure you push it all the way in until it clicks in place. And we're going to use both of those. And then the cables would then run across the back of your case and up to the top and plug into the top left of the motherboard. This is usually the same on most motherboards. You just have two connectors at the top. Sometimes those cables need to be split. So I've seen some motherboards where you've got one eight pin connector and then one four pin. The cables will break apart and then you can connect up individually. So you could just have four connectors instead of one eight pin. So that's worth bearing in mind. If you need to, you can split these up. So if you need to, they just break apart in the middle and then you'd have two lots of four instead of one eight connector. Now I'm going to show you the connections for hard disk drives, SSDs and other things. So this is a SATA power connector. You'll see that it has this flat L shaped connector on one end, but it's also daisy chainable. You'll see there's multiple different connections on a single cable. So one end plugs into power supply unit and then you can plug several different things into it. So if you're planning on installing hard disk drives or multiple SSDs, you can just connect it up to where it says SATA slash PATA. You'd plug that in down there. And again, you can see the way the clip sits into the bottom of it. And then you can then connect up multiple different devices to it. So you can actually mix and match things. So in this instance, I'm gonna quickly demonstrate with SSDs and hard disk drive. So I've got one Kingston drive here. You will notice that there is an L shape to it. So it has a slight sort of slot on it. So you can only plug it in one way. So if you find that it's not going in properly, you just sort of flip it over and turn it around. Again, I'm demonstrating this all outside the case. So it's easy to see. Obviously you'd want to install all these drives into your case first and then plug the power in, but it is easier to see this way. Then the data connection. So you need data cables, which come with your motherboard. They plug into the drives and that plugs into the motherboard on the bottom right hand side. And then that will pass the data through. 
and you make sure you connect both of those up because I have had people say that the drives weren't working, but you've got to connect these up and to both the power supply unit and to your motherboard in order for them to work properly. So it's important to bear in mind. The other thing that SATA power does is it RGB controllers, fan controllers and other things like that. So you'll see this is an NZXT RGB hub, which takes three RGB connectors from NZXT's fans. This requires SATA power as well as a USB connection, so you can connect those up. In the build that I'm doing at the moment, I've ended up using three of these, so you, you do need a lot of different connections, so it's worth bearing in mind before you start building what you're going to be connecting up. This one is a PATA connector, so it connects up with SATA and PATA. This is for peripherals and other things. I said earlier, you might not be using this. This will vary depending on your build. This is used, for example, for reservoir pump combos for liquid cooled systems. So if you're doing a custom loop, for example, then you might use this. You can see what that connector looks like. It was also used historically for other things, but you don't find it often in many builds. I rarely use this myself and I built a lot of different PCs, but you can see it will connect up to something like this. This is a Corsair reservoir pump combo which has one of those connectors on the bottom of it. And you'll see that that is there. And again, you'll just sort of run that to there and plug it in and connect that up. Next, I want to talk about the graphics cards connectors. Now, it's important to pay attention to this because there are four cables included, which are the traditional ones, but they are actually different in their design. So you will see that there are two with a single connector on it and then two with daisy chain connectors. So the pig's tail sort of style to them. So one end plugs in, to your PSU and then the other has two connectors on it which are two 8-pin connectors on there and then the other two on the left hand side that you can see in this clip have just a single connector that connects up to your graphics card. So for demo purposes I'm going to be using my Gigabyte 3090 GPU which requires two 8-pin power connectors. Now I'd recommend if you can using the two connectors that don't have that pigtail effect on them just single straight connectors from the PSU into your graphics card. This will give you the most amount of power and ensure that it runs with maximum performance and gives you the best possible results out of it. So we use those two cables that I mentioned so separate them out from the other ones and then you plug in the one end which isn't split into your PSU and then the other end you'll see that it has PCIe markings on it and you'll also notice that it's split in two so this is similar to the CPU one in that it breaks apart but as standard is set with either six or eight so you have to push it together if you've got an eight pin. Now you may find some variants in some of the GPUs some require one eight pin and one six pin some require just one eight pin some require three eight pins so it really does vary depending on what you're going to do. But if you're using one like I am, you have to push these two clips together to make sure that they're held in place nicely and then push it all the way in until it clicks into place. And that then ensures that you'll get the power that you need to your GPU. If that connector is loose, you may find that your GPU doesn't run properly or doesn't give you maximum performance. So it could be something as simple as that if you're suffering from issues. So plug in your PCIe cable, so the second one, and again, repeat this process. So just make sure you push those clips together nicely and slide it into place. Now this is obviously 3090, just requires two connectors on it, but you may require another one. So if you've got a graphics card that needs three eight pin power connectors, then you will have to use the other cable, which is obviously that pigtail one, with the daisy chain connector on it. So plug that in, same sort of logic, into the power supply unit end, and then you've got this two connectors. Not gonna look as neat, but you do have the potential there. You can see that you can install more so there is definitely enough for most modern graphics cards so i've shown you the process outside the case obviously just a quick demo of what it looks like inside so you plug your graphics card into the top slot on the motherboard to give you the best performance because that will give you the most cpu lanes and then you've got to run the cable from underneath or somewhere and plug it in now make sure you don't put too much tension on this cable and again once again make sure all those cables are pushed together and seated nicely and held in with those clips so they are all connected up because it's quite easy to accidentally not have the full connection when you've got the you've got to push those two clips together sometimes the couple of ones that are separated might not be fully pushed in so pay attention to what's going on there the next is for the 40 series graphics cards from nvidia so this is gigabyte 4070 ti which has that standard separate connector now Included with this GPU is usually a cable that's split in two and an adapter. You can find multiple different ones, different manufacturers. You sometimes got two 
three or four eight pin power connectors for your traditional that then run into that single connector. But with this Corsair PSU, you get one single cable that plugs into the graphics card, so it looks a lot neater. You'll notice that the cable is also flat and easier to manipulate into your case. It has two power connectors that plug into the PSU, so you've got to plug them into the PCI E slash CPU connectors on there, so on the right hand side, and then that cable would then run and plug into your graphics card at the other end. This cable is nice because it makes things a lot neater on the front side because you don't have to use the adapter that it comes in the box with your graphics card. Instead, you can use this one. But it's very important that you push this all the way in. Once again, you've got to make sure it's seated properly. People have been having problems with some of their GPUs where the power cable's melted, and that's because they've not put it in properly. It's not fully seated and clipped all the way in, or they've put too much tension on the cable, pulling it from one side to the other, or up and down, just putting a lot of tension on there so take care with it but don't worry too much because i haven't had any issues as long as you're careful not to put too much tension on there and it's fully seated at both ends you should be fine now my next recommendation is to plug in all these cables beforehand it's actually worth working out what cables you're going to need and then going through the steps and installing all the cables before you go about putting the psu in your case this makes life a lot easier because you can see where the connector is going to plug in and if you're trying to do it when it's in the case it can become quite fiddly then you'll find that there are some hexagonal screws included in the box. Actually, in most cases, you'll find that it's included with both your case and with a power supply unit. So use the ones included with the PSU, and then we want to seat the PSU so it's face down. So in this case, you want the fan to point down towards the bottom of the case, and that will then pull air in from the bottom through the vents, and then it will suck that in, cool it down, and then blow the hot air out of the rear of the power supply unit. So you use these hexagonal screws to screw it in in four corners. So you just basically got to line it up in the case with those corners and then screw it in. You can see a look of it here and you'll see that there are different holes on the case depending on sort of where the pier shoe is positioned or basically accounting for different sizes. But in this case, we've got one in the top left and then in a the few corners around there surrounding it. You will see on this NZXT case as well that there's a dust shield on the bottom, but you can see here what I was talking about, the fan sits on the bottom and pulls cold air in through there, but that dust shield will stop it from getting clogged up over time as well, and then the hot air will vent out of the rear. Now, obviously, more logical view of going about actually installing the power supply unit, run those two 8-pin CPU power connectors along the side here. The nice thing about this PSU is these cables are really flat and quite bendable so they're easy to manipulate. You basically just got to run them through the channeling and cable tidying loops and then up to the top and then push them in. Because they're flat they've also got plenty of room above the motherboard in order to be able to plug them in so they're ideal for smaller cases which makes life a little bit easier. That fat 24 pin one though is quite difficult to manipulate. It's quite tough to get through there especially if you've got like a cable hiding tray like that. But once all your cables are connected up as you follow this guide hopefully you can turn on your PC and enjoy some gaming goodness. Be sure to check out the description for more related content that you might find useful. Thanks for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.